so uh, recently this video came out so I'm gonna show y'all this video and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna address this okay so let me pull this up American slavery would have been over with one verse one verse would have changed it forever one verse Exodus 21 16 it says, anybody caught kidnapping another person and then selling them will receive capital punishment. You will be killed if you kidnap somebody and if you sell them. American slavery was based on kidnapping and selling folk. If that one verse was taught and preached and applied, slavery would have been ordered because everybody went subject to death since the Old Testament was being used to promote it. But because of greed, which means I want the profit, I want the benefit, I want the income, I want the power, I want it because of greed. People were held hostage by kidnapping and selling while the church was silent. Because when you abandon God and his word, slavery rules on all levels. And he gives the, the Exodus 21 and 16. So we'll address the Exodus 21 and 16, right? I'll come back to that. But in listening to what he says, you know, he's talking about American slavery and all this, but never mentioned the identity of those people who were taken captive in slave trade. This, then he says, it's because of greed. It's because of greed. No, it's a covenant issue, right? The only thing he mentioned about the old covenant was like, if they had went to Exodus 21, they were using the, 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 uh, that verse, I mean, the Old Testament to justify it. Well, the Old Testament condemned it, right? And that's where his point was, well, if they would have done this, but you have to understand, the people that involved in this were not the Israelites who done it. The people that got sold were the ones that were the Israelites, right? And so this is why you got to understand scripture. This is why when we keep saying, keep telling people identity matters, it's the identity. So you can understand what happened, why it happened, and what's going to happen in the future because it happened, right? See, everybody wants to make this, oh, we all come to Christ and we all get saved. And da, da. No, there's going to be some punishments issued out for what happened, right? And people better start telling the truth because people got to repent. You know what I'm saying? This is a worldwide thing that happened, okay? And I'm going to show you something in a minute. But first, let's talk about what he said about the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, okay? So first, let's go to Romans. I want to show y'all Romans chapter 9, okay? Romans chapter 9, and this is what it reads. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. This is Paul, the Apostle Paul writing, right? For I would wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, right? So he's talking about his natural tribe of people, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, okay? So now let's get see. He said, I almost wish that I didn't know and didn't understand this because my kinsmen, they don't understand what's going on. Who are Israelites? So Paul tells you his kinsmen are the Israelites. Why? Paul comes from the tribe of Benjamin, right? To whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, right? So the law was given to the Israelites, period. So when people say it don't matter who Israel is, it does matter because God gave the law to the Israelites, right? And so you can't expect the Gentiles to, to, to carry out the law because the Gentiles wasn't part of the old covenant. The old covenant was with the Israelites, okay? But anyway, but this is what he said, who's are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came. So why do people keep saying that it don't matter who the Israelites are? When concerning the flesh, Christ came. He came out of that family for a specific reason, to fulfill prophecy. He had to come from the tribe of the Israelites, and he had to come from the tribe of Judah, because for God to fulfill his promise that he made to David, right? So here we go. So as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. 
right? So you see, it mattered about the, the, the identity of the Israelites. Now I had somebody comment in my, one of my last videos on YouTube and, and, and I had to say this, listen, if you don't understand that if I told you that Donald Trump was a black man and Barack Obama was a white man, when you go to go to somebody says, oh, that's President Obama, ex-President Obama. And you looking at a white guy and everybody else going to be like, that's not Obama. That's not that's not him. Obama is black. Right. Or if you go to vote for Trump and then all of a sudden some black guy, you know what I'm saying? Some white guy show up and I done told you that Trump is a black guy that I didn't describe and say he's a black guy. When you go and see Donald Trump, you're going to be sitting here. Who's this white guy? I ain't voting for him. Where's the black guy? You told me Donald Trump was a black guy, right? So you see, your the, the that's why the scripture gave us his hair is like wool, feet the color of brass is burning in the fire, right? You just see what I'm saying? You got to understand that the strict description was part of the identity, right? If somebody comes and tells you, you know what I mean, that that oh yeah, I listen to Brother Tim, Bill Tim, whatever, and then they go back and they give you some white guy calling himself Brother Tim Stevens, right? You see that video, you're going to say, that ain't him. That ain't who I'm talking about. No, that, that, that's an imposter. That ain't the real one. He's a black guy, right? So this is why when we start talking about the identity of the Israelites. Because, see, this is why people don't understand what happened with the slave trade, right? Because you don't understand who the people were that was involved in this, okay? All right now, so now this is what we're talking about here. So you see what he says, okay? He says that, okay, under Exodus 21 and 16, right? This is what he said, under Exodus 21 and 16. Well, let's go to Exodus 21 and 16. He said, okay, well, if, if we would have just known that, then they wouldn't have done it. No, first of all, you got to understand why the slave trade even happened is because the Israelites had, had kept breaking the covenant and then to make it worse, when God sent the king, they said, crucify him, crucify him. His blood be on us and on, on our children, right? So now these people got a curse on them. They going to get punished for that, all right? But now, Exodus 21, 16, what you saw him talk about in the video. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death, right? So now, if you are saying that those people that are calling themselves Jews went and stole a man and sold him, then that proves that they're not the Jews. Why? Because they would have been under a death penalty. You can't do that, right? You're not supposed to do that. This is written, these are the judgments which thou hast shall set before them, right? We go to Exodus chapter 20, as you can see, this is for the children of Israel, right? And the Lord said unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, right? So to the children of Israel, they can't steal a man and sell him. That's sin if they do it. So when you got the, the people calling themselves Jews that went around here and participated, that proves you ain't the Israelites. Because if you were the Israelites and you participated in it, you would have been in trouble. God would have killed you for that, right? But see, that's why people don't understand, right? Now let me show you another, show you another video, right? And I want you to see this. And this is what another thing I want to make sure I address in this video. When we talk about who are the true Israelites, when you hear people talk about the Hebrew Israelites, people are getting this all com confused. What we're just saying is the linear descendants of Jacob who is Israel, right? Being a Hebrew Israelite is not a faith, right? Being a Hebrew Israelite is about a lineage. It's the same as your last name, right? I'm a Stevens. I come from the tribe of the Stevens, right? This is what you must understand. Now, what we got to understand is once we got brought over here, they changed the name, our identity, and they changed our last names to the point that we had these slave names. Why? They was trying to hide our identity of being the Israelites, right? Now, what does that mean? Being an Israelite carried with it, you have the laws, statutes, and commandments of the covenant that your forefathers made 
with God the Most High through Moses. You are under that covenant. And so when you broke the covenant, eventually God said, I'm kicking you out of the land and you're going to be scared. Okay? So now when we go, let's go here. Let's go before I go to my next point. Let's go here. So now because we are trespassing, we're in trouble and judgment is about ready to fall on us. God basically gave us one more chance and said, hey, I'm going to send my son down there because y'all won't listen to none of the prophets when I tell y'all to repent. So I'm going to send my son down here for y'all to be able to, to, to repent so that I can have mercy on you unless I destroy y'all for breaking this, continue breaking this covenant, right? So we're going to go to Luke 21, 24. Hold on a second. Here we go. All right. But once this was breached, right? Once Christ was sacrificed, this is what he said. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Y'all better get out here and y'all better run. And let them which are in the midst of it depart and let not them that are into it, the country that are there into. Right? For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. So from this time, the southern kingdom of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi had to go into captivity into all nations. Why? Because we yelled out, our forefathers said, crucify him, crucify him. But what they actually did was sacrifice the Passover lamb for the rest of the nations, right? So at this moment, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. That's why Paul was given the gospel and he was told to go to the Gentiles. I already gave it to them. We can't, I came to my own, my own received them not. But judgment is now going to fall on the children of Judah, right? On the southern kingdom. But now Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, right? When the last Gentile is brought in, everything converts back to Israel. This is what you got to understand. This is why it matters who the Israelites are, right? We're waiting on the last Gentile to be converted. Once that happens, Christ is, he's coming back to get, to restore the kingdom to Israel, right? Chapter one, Acts chapter one, here we go. When they therefore were come together, right? They asked of him saying, Lord, wilt thou again at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel, right? The final kingdom that comes is when Christ comes back to, to rule, right? That's when the kingdom gets returned to Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power. Right? But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Right? Because we got scattered into the uttermost parts of the earth. Right? So now that we understand why we got scattered. Now we understand that, you know what I'm saying? The people who really said that they're Jews now, y'all was not supposed to proceed. When he gave that verse, when Tony Evans gave that verse, he basically told on these Ashkenazis, right? If y'all had participated, the punishment for y'all participating in it would have been death, right? As Israelites, we can't participate in the selling of human beings. Why? That's the law. If we break the law, that's a sin. If we sin, then we under the curse of the law, right? But see, the rest of the nations... They ain't under that because they weren't part of the covenant, right? So that's why they done it. But God used them to punish us because we told, told them to crucify our brother. You see what I'm saying? So we had, we had punishment on us. But our punishment comes first, but we now coming into a, a time where we're starting to get restored. That's why God is exposing these lies for who they are. What they did, where they messed up, was run around here, stole our identity, and try to cut us off from being a nation, Right? So now let me show you this. Let me show you this video first, and then we'll come back to some of those other what's next. All right? So what is the truth about Jewish involvement in the slave trade? Now, interestingly, you have examples of Arab Islamic involvement in slave trade going into Africa and bringing slaves out. Oh, back in the 600s, documented as early as 641, something that was practiced in Islam with Arabs and Muslims for many, many centuries, and in some parts of the world still practiced to this day. Oh, it wasn't just us, it was the Arabs, they did it too. That don't justify you doing it. 
You know what I'm saying? The Arabs weren't under the covenant that you claim you since you say you're Israel. What is your first defense is, well, the Arabs did it, the Arabs did it too. So, but now you just now admitted to that one, the Arabs, y'all weren't, they involved in this, in the, the transatlantic slave trade, you know, in slavery, taking slaves captives in Africa. And then you admitting that y'all were involved in it. And y'all call yourselves Jews. So that means Islam was involved and Judaism is involved in this. All right? But we got another person that's involved. Let him keep on running his mouth and telling us. Let so it's interesting when you have the nation of Islam trying to sing out Jews when they must know about the historic Arab slash Muslim role in slave trade long before Jews or Christians were involved in it and even ongoing to this day. Did you hear that? Okay, what did he say? But obviously when it was Jews and Christians. So now you just told us of the three monotheistic faiths. All of you were involved in this. All of you. Christians, fake Jews, and the Arabs, the Islam. All three, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, all three is involved in the transatlantic slave trade, right? Now, does that not seem like a conspiracy? Why are y'all all ganging up on one group of people? Why would you do that, right? Except that y'all were entered into a league or into a, into a conspiracy and try to remove these people from their, from their heritage, right? And y'all don't want to tell. And now that it's coming out, guess what you're doing? Oh, you know, it's just like when you got two children and then one of them get busted, right? I told you to go take out the trash, and I told your brother to you know go clean the go 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 uh, wash the dishes, right? Now all of a sudden I come in and I say, whoa, 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 why where that trash ain't taken out? Well, 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 he didn't wash the dishes. He didn't wash the dishes. You pointing at him, he's like, well, he didn't take out the trash, right? Because you both know that you're in trouble. You both know you did something you ain't had no business doing. Right now, you want to start telling on each other. Right, that's what happens when you got guilt on you. So now you see he's a you know, well, it wasn't just us. Why, why y'all just blaming all of us? You ain't supposed to have no part in it. You claim to be the Jews. You claim to be the Jews. You ain't got you. If any of them, if anybody ain't supposed to have no part in, is you, because you just read Exodus twenty one sixteen. You can't steal and buy a man and steal a man and sell him. Y'all know that. That's the law. Period. So that goes to show. So why would you do to somebody what God told you not to do? Right? And then that, that sin is punishable by death. Right? But you don't want to talk about that because y'all guilty. Right? You know what you did. And you know you're lying and you stole the identity of the people that you did it to. Let's, let's put that aside. Let's say, hey, either way, guilt is guilt. Jewish responsibility is Jewish responsibility. And Eli Faber and other Jewish scholars would agree. So, so first... Look at Faber's description of the horrors of the slave trade, just to, to jar us so we feel it again. He said, despite assiduous efforts by historians since Philip D. Curtin published his seminal study of the size of the slave trade in 1969, we shall probably never know in all its grim and cruel enormity how many men, women, and children on the content, continent of Africa were trapped in the net of the Atlantic slave trade. from their homes and their families, marched in chains to the coasts and transported across the seas during an era that lasted well over three centuries. Millions were condemned to spend the remainder of their lives in servitude and to witness the enslavement of their children. did not survive the Atlantic crossing, perishing instead on vessels swept by disease or from a profound depression that the historical record tells us frequently sees many of the captives in its grip. Still others died within a few years of arrival, toiling on the plantations and in the mines of Europe's colonies in the Western Hemisphere.
So Faber paints a picture, drastic picture of the horrors of the slave trade. And, and all that is, they're just words. Who can imagine how horrible it was, how terrible it was, how evil it was? What kind of role did Jews play? And what's the, se- what's the secret that is being covered up? That's what we really need to know. So I'm going to continue to quote from Faber. Again, just a top scholar in the subject and a highly reliable book. This is what he says. That Jews participated in the slave trade, sometimes by investing in companies engaged in it, sometimes as the owners of slave ships, and that they owned slaves when they settled in the Americas, are matters that have been known from a substantial body of works produced by Jewish historians. In other words, there's no secret. This is nothing that's been covered up. that's been hidden. This is nothing that the Jewish community hasn't talked about openly and documented even for a couple of centuries. And you can go to a standard Jewish reference book like Encyclopedia Judaica, dozens of volumes, look up the lengthy article on slavery and slave trade. It'll it'll lay things out. There's, There's no secret to that. Everything that he said, is that not in the curse of the law? that you would be taken on slave ships and scattered worldwide? That, you know what I mean? You would long for your children who would be sold? That you would be having yokes of iron placed upon your neck? What he just read, we all know that's in the Bible, Deuteronomy 28. But y'all are running around here saying that that happened to you, that you're the Israelites, that you were scattered. And it didn't. You took part in it. And you admitting that you took part in it, right? And then we get this Negro preacher who stands up here and says that all could have been whatever. You don't even realize you just told on these fake Jews. You just told on them. Because if they had if they had done that and they were the real Israelites, God would have punished them. They'd be under the curse of the law. They would be taken captive too. So people, I know people will look and say, now, well, that's what happened. We're Hitler and da-da-da. That was just one country. That gathering is supposed to be worldwide, right? Now, what is the result of all of this? Okay? This is why you got to understand scripture. All right? So let's go. Psalm 83. I told you all three monotheistic faiths are involved in this. All three of them. Right? So this is what it says. Psalm 83. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. Right? What it says. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Right? All these people that don't truly believe in God. None of them. Right? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, right? The tabernacles of Edom. So there you got, you know what I mean? Uh, Esau, that's Esau, and the Ishmaelites. So that there you got the Arabs. The Edom and the Ishmaelites, those are the Arabs of Moab and the Hagarines, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the brook of, Kib, of Kib, uh, Kison, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb. Yeah, all their princes as Zeba and as Zalmunna, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession, right? So you see what this is all about. That's why they're over there in, the, in that land now. That's why they fighting. You got the Arabs, you got Islam, and these fake Jews over there fighting over a land that they're trying to take from God because God gave it to his people. So they ain't going to get it. 
And that's why they're going to keep fighting, right? Oh my God, make them like a wheel as a stubble before the wind, as a fire burning for wood, right? And as the flame set at the mountains on fire, so persecute them with the tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yeah, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Jehovah or Yahuwah or Yahweh or Yehoah, right? Art the most high over all the earth, right? So you see, they, they all got together and, and, and tried to cut us off from being a nation. And that's why they stole our identity and trying to get us into all kinds of nonsense, right? But now, when we come down to Joel chapter 3, this is why you people are like, well, we're all Christians. Y'all don't understand what the Most High is doing in all this, right? Because you don't read the scripture, right? And the problem is, see, because you believe the wrong people, now you think about Americans, right? evangelical Christians. They're, we stand with and we support Israel. You're standing with the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> you're, you're sitting up here. They're raping y'all billions of dollars a year. All your money going over there to, to a fake state of Israel that they created to keep you deceived, right? Because they didn't want you to realize that the people that you were putting your hands on, the people that you stole their identity, the people that you thought were just a bunch of uh, uh, savages that got brought on ships from Africa were just heathens. No, those were the Israelites that they took that they took captive, right? And they removed them far from their border, right? Just like the word said, just like prophecy said. So now let's go to Job chapter three, right? And then y'all can see what, 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 what all this is really about. They got, I mean, there's trouble coming behind it. Let's read Joel chapter three and then I'll let y'all go. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land, right? So you see, that's why all that stuff going on with Palestine and them between the Arabs and the, I mean, between Islam and between these fake Jews. That's why they got all that going over there, right? And they have cast lots for my people, right? Is that not what happened during the slave trade? And have given a boy for an harlot. Is that not what happened for the slave trade? And sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Well, did not they sell the, those people in the slave, the land of slave trade for rum and wine, right? Yeah, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? See that? Will you reckon, render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Well, guess who did that? The Knights Templar. Those people that came down and sacked the temple and went off with the gold and all this stuff when Rome came down there, you know what I mean? And they went and took all that stuff into Rome. They got God's gold, right? That was in the temple. That's why they in trouble. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians, right? Who are Americans? What does America practice? Democracy, right? Sold unto the Grecians. Americans pr practice democracy that comes from Greece. But they sold us to these people that you might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. So y'all going to get in trouble for what you did, right? And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles, right? So see, they got their day coming. Remember what Christ said to the days of the Gentiles be fulfilled? Right? Proclaim you this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into... into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Assemble yourselves and come all you heathen and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Right? You see that? So that's what's going to happen. That's why you got to understand. Right? All that stuff they got going on over there. Yeah, y'all did it, but y'all removed the people far from their border. Y'all think y'all went in there and tried to take possession of God's land. Mm -mm. God promised that land to, to the descendants of Jacob. You can't have it. 
He made a promise to Abraham. He made a promise to Isaac. And he made a promise to Jacob. Right? And to this seed. That land does not belong to y'all. Y'all try to lie. You try to be an identity. It's just like if somebody wanted to steal my bank account. What are they going to do? They try to steal my identity. Right? If I leave an inheritance for my son, you come in here now all of a sudden, you're going to steal his identity and then try to go up here and get the paperwork and then go up here and then that way you try to take, take you know, change his identity and use his identity for you so you can steal his possessions, his rightful inheritance. That's what they try to do. Right? And yet we got Christianity that don't want to tell the truth. We got uh, Islam that don't want to tell the truth. And we got these fake Jews, you know what I mean, saying that they're Judaism, which they ain't. You know what I mean? That's why when we read the law, it's like, this don't apply to y'all. And y'all know it don't apply to you. Right? But this is why none of this stuff made sense until people start identifying who the real people were. And ironically, the only person to ever be on record that told the truth was Adolf Hitler. Right? Go figure. But anyway, with that being said, I let y'all go. Peace.